remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. is officially upon us now and this is America's evil genius Travis Cook once again with you to give you a bit of a year-end message I suppose I'm taking a little bit of a break from the college football and the bowl games that are going on today and we're taping this uh, just before the Rose Bowl gets underway so I want to take a little bit of time and give you a bit of a year-end message here uh, you know I, I know it's uh, tempting sometimes and it's natural sometimes when we come to a new year to to kind of look back on the old year and think to ourselves okay what what was the important thing we learned last year what 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 made 2013 a big deal you know for the the roller coaster ride that we went on the last 365 days what did, what did we get out of it what is it about 2013 that's going to resonate going down the road you think to yourself when i'm old and gray and I'm sitting on my front porch in my rocking chair, my porch swing, and my 25-year-old buxom blonde trophy wife brings me another beer, and I'm looking back at my life, what am I going to say to myself when I think of 2013 and say, okay, what happened in 2013 that resonated for 10 or 20 years after the fact? Was it Miley Cyrus twerking and showing her tits at every photo shoot she did? No, I really don't think that will have a lot of long-term implication. And, and by the way, Miley, j just so you know, um, you're no longer being shocking by showing your tits and your, your videos and your, your photo shoots and so forth. I mean, by this point, we've pretty much all seen them, and um, they're okay. They're not bad. They're not great. They're not horrible. But we all know what you're working with. And, and I'm not discouraging you, Miley, from showing your tits anytime you want to, but just don't think that you're being edgy or, or pushing the envelope or, or creating any sort of shock value when you do it because we all know what you're working with now. Now, you want to show them fine, but just don't think you're getting that pushing the envelope uh, type of thing out of it. If you really want to push the envelope or, or shock people, release a good song. Just saying. So anyway, if Miley Cyrus was not what made 2013 significant, and Miley Cyrus's tits were not what made 2013 significant, then what was? What is it that happened in 2013 that, I, that may resonate for years and years and years? Well, if you ask me, I think the most resonating thing about 2013, the most important thing about 2013, was that it ended up being the year of George Zimmerman, Ted Cruz, and Phil Robertson. Now, I don't say that because those three guys managed to grab some headlines during the year. I mean, every year we have people that sort of come out of the woodwork and grab headlines. There's nothing unique about that. But I think what's different here is that in these three cases, George Zimmerman, Ted Cruz, and Phil Robertson, you saw situations where the media and the American left tried to destroy the lives of these people because of things that they did or stands that they took. And instead of lying back and taking it, you saw conservatives and traditional Americans rally around each of these three people and keep the media from destroying them. You saw us force a debate on some issues that liberals have never wanted to debate. Now, a lot of that happened because of social media. It's something that we have today that didn't exist years ago. And, and if you look back in the past, previous generations, you know, if, if, if things like George Zimmerman and, and his trial would have happened in the 2000s and the 1990s, or, you know, something like, like Ted Cruz going up before Congress and saying, hey, the way you do business is wrong and health care is wrong, something like that in the 2000s and the 1990s, or, or something like Phil Robertson taking the stands he made back then, you really wouldn't have seen this type of rallying around of, of those people shamefully you would have seen the media come out and try to destroy them and they would have probably succeeded back in those days and i hate to say this but conservatives and, and traditional americans at that time they seem to fear a little bit uh public perception if you will you know they, they might agree with someone but they wouldn't want to say it publicly because they're afraid of what their friends might say or afraid of how they're perceived afraid someone might call them racist but what I saw in 2013 was that this generation of conservatives, this generation of traditional Americans, does not fear that whatsoever. We will stand by our beliefs. We will stand by those who exhibit our beliefs. 
regardless of what anybody thinks about it, regardless of what anybody says. We don't mind being called names. These three people, George Zimmerman, Ted Cruz, Phil Robertson, in, in different ways, made decisions and took stands that each of us would likely have taken had we been in their shoes. In George Zimmerman's case, he was out there trying to protect his neighbor's property and eventually protect his life. And we think if we were in his shoes that fateful night, what would we have done? And it's hard for me to think that I would have done anything differently than George Zimmerman did. We see Ted Cruz, a newly elected senator, going to Washington, seeing how the game is played and saying, this is wrong, and going up before the Senate and saying so. And I think to myself, if I were a senator, I would hope I would do that. I would hope I would help shut down the government rather than to allow it to continue fleecing the American people. I see Phil Robertson being asked questions about his beliefs from a reporter, and I'm thinking I would hope I would stand up for my beliefs as courageously as he did. So we see these things and they resonate. I'm not saying these people are heroes. Most of us on the right really don't dig the idea of hero worship anyway. I mean, I'm sure they all have their faults. And we've seen some things from George Zimmerman in the last few months that show he's probably got some faults. But in terms of the stands they took and the things they did, it's hard to say we would have done anything differently in those specific circumstances. That's why we wanted to, to stand by them. We look at George Zimmerman, Phil Robertson, and Ted Cruz, and we think to ourselves, there but for the grace of God, go I. 2013 was the year the conservatives and traditional Americans stood up to the bullying, the intolerance, and the hate that constantly comes from the American left. We stood up to the oppression that they put upon us. And we forced the left to debate ideas and to debate topics that they'd rather not debate. When, when, when they come out and say George Zimmerman needs to go to prison, we say, wait a second. Why? Why shouldn't a man defend himself when his life's on the line? When they say Ted Cruz should be drummed out of Washington, we say, wait a second. Why should a man be drummed out for speaking the truth? and for being fiscally responsible. When they say, Phil Robertson needs to be drummed off of television, we say, why? Because he merely stood up for his beliefs? Not only did we force liberals to debate topics that they think have been settled for years, but in fact have not been, we forced change. We forced a and &E to back down and put Phil Robertson back on the air. And when you see that, when you see what happens when conservatives rally by social media, by the internet, Something we couldn't have done 20, 30 years ago when the left had that unchallenged bully pulpit of the media. They've still got that pulpit, and it's still very powerful, but we now have something that can equalize it. When you see that, and you see the results of what we have done when we have mobilized, boy, doesn't a light go on in your head? Doesn't the light bulb go on? And I predict we're going to see a lot more of this from conservatives and traditional Americans standing up to the bullies when they try to kick sand in our face in 2014. We're going to kick some sand back in their face. 2013 was just the beginning. You can't silence us anymore. You can't shame us into being quiet. You have to debate, you liberals. You have to debate your very core beliefs, and we're going to force you to defend them. Welcome to 2014. It's going to be one hell of a lot more contentious for you bastards than 2013 is. Game on, motherfuckers. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next week.